Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Master's Peace Theater. Tonight's episode features Double Trouble, the pack-in comic book from Masters of the Universe Origins Series 2. Without any further delay, we present to you Double Trouble. Castle Grayskull, Fortress of Mystery and Power. So, sorceries discovered another artifact hidden in Castle Grayskull? Sha, the Mummer's Brace. It's ideal for somebody with your skills, Manny. Does she got anything for me? Not this time, Orko dude. Oh well, at least I have my magic alakazam! The drawbridge finally opened, Skeletor. Ah, excellent, Trap John. The Coronite Crystal lies within the walls. Now bring me that fool Orko, see? Um, guys? Blah! Fear my glow! Blah! Gotcha, twerp. Ha 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 ha. Skeletor? Nah, he man can't help you now, fool. Ah! In fact, once I possess the Cornite Crystal Sea, <laughs> he man won't be able to defeat anybody, and I'll be unstoppable. Nah. Skeletor, magically disguised as Orko, searches Castle Grayskull for the Cornite Crystal, which would enhance his power tenfold. Should be right around this. Yo, Orko, dude. He man, no, nah, I mean. What are you doing here? Nah, uh, I'm Orko! Guarding Castle Grayskull's greatest artifacts. Everything Skeletor wants lies in this room, bro. You don't say. Meanwhile, outside of Castle Grayskull's walls. I've got to get out of here. Why am I feel the wrath, the wrath of my scythe of doom? Sorry, I was just telling Trapjaw how terrifying you are, but he said he's scarier. Huh? Is this is true, true Trapjaw? Trap you think you you're think scarier, you're scarier than, than Scarecrow? You know it. Alakazoom! Fool, you let him escape! You tell Skeletor! Ah, uh, twerp! Finally, the crystal is mine! Goodbye, He Man! <laughs> He man, watch out! Two Orcos, the Mummer's Brace truly creates impressive illusions, as well as dispels them. Game over, dude. Surrender. Never! Skeletor escaped! For today, Orco, dude. But with your bravery, one day we'll stop him for good. One day. Nah, one day. <laughs> ah, what a tale. It's a shame it had to come to an end so soon. That's all our time for this week. We hope you'll join us again on Master's Peace Theater. Good night. <laughs>
You've got He-Man, Manny Faces, Orko, Skeletor, Trapshaw, and Scareglow. The guys on the right side, the four guys here are Series 2. And I've got all four, if you remember uh, last year, um, or the year before, actually, in 2020, uh, we already reviewed Scareglow, but we've got the, the rest of them today, and we'll also take another look at Scareglow just to finish off the series. And uh, let's see who's next. Next up is Orko, Heroic Court Magician. Modern posing retro play. Look at this figure. This is probably um, one of the best Orko figures I've seen that's uh, close to what he looked like on the animated series. The vintage figure for Orko, um, while it looked good, didn't look as good as this one. Um, so this one was a little bit harder for me to find. Actually, most of these figures uh, in the line, especially in the early waves, were difficult to find with the exception of He-Man and Skeletor. But I was able to uh, finagle uh, these figures without having to pay too much of a, uh, a markup to scalpers and so on and so forth. Did a couple of times, but you got to do what you got to do. We turn the box around. Orko may have unpredictable magic powers, but his loyalty and pure heart are never in doubt. We have a, a, an image of Orko. Uh, putting a bucket of water on Beast Man's head as uh, <laughs> as Man at Arms looks on. Pose on high flying stand for levitating action. Just a, a flying stand, not a high flying stand, but that's pretty cool. A flying stand and twist into powerful battle positions. Um, yeah, you can move his arms around. Whoopie shit. But uh, but what's cool is he comes with a stand. Didn't come with a stand. The vintage figure had that uh, rip roaring uh, wheel on the bottom action and a and a rip cord, and you could shoot him across the kitchen floor um, like a race car. Uh, a very you know ridiculous looking race car at that. Who's next? Oh, and finally, I cannot wait to open up this figure because Trapjaw, evil and armed for combat is my favorite character in Masters of the Universe um, throughout. Love this figure as a kid, and I'm, I'm loving the look of this figure right now. Looks uh, to have a little bit more brighter colors, obviously made of different materials than the vintage figure, so that's gonna change, but looks like he's still got his, his robotic arm and attachments that come with him in the box here, uh, hidden behind him in a plastic bag. Uh, can't wait to get these things out and take a look at it, but first let's take a look at the back of the box. The cybernetic criminal can literally arm himself with any weapon he needs for battle. Plug laser gun, hook, or pincers into arm. Open and close jaw for biting action, and uh, not to even mention, he's got a, a, little, uh, a little loophole on the top of his head, you can, uh, and as as we see in the image, he's uh, shooting down a zip line uh, by his head through his helmet, and uh, very very cool, multifunctional, super cool, lots of accessories, awesome look, trap jaw, um, still one of my favorite figures in the line and in Origins, about to be one of my favorite figures in the line, but let's uh, let's take a look and see what these figures look like outside of the box. Okay, so first up is Scareglow. Since we already reviewed him last year, or in 2020, rather, um, I'm not going to get used to that for a couple of months at least. But um, here he is. It's it's Scareglow, the, the glowing skeleton man, and, and uh, a rare figure in the vintage line, a, a rare figure in this line as well. A very popular character, even though back in the day, I don't know how popular he was because I didn't really see him. Never saw him, never saw him at a friend's house, didn't have him myself. By the time 1987 rolled around, I was pretty much done with Masters of the Universe and uh, never saw a scare, scare glow, rather, and uh, never uh, 
N- never knew he existed until until much later on. Um, but very, very cool figure. This was absolutely a very difficult figure to find. Um, a lot, a lot of scalpers snapping him up. People trying to, you know, army build scare glow. And he is a very, very cool figure. His body glows in the dark. He comes with this awesome um, pole arm sort of weapon. Uh, he has a very cool looking cape. Awesome looking figure. Again, if you want like a further, uh, more detailed review on him, check out my video uh, from 2020. That's Scare Glow. Okay, so here's Man E Faces out of the box. And uh, I got to say, he looks pretty good. Nice, uh, bright colors. Uh, maybe a little bit brighter than the vintage figure, but that's still okay. It's in a different uh, set of materials here. A little bit more of a softer plastic. Um, of course, you, when we're looking at these Masters of the Universe figures, we've got to take a look at the action feature. And uh, Man E Faces' his feature is he has many faces. Uh, as in the name. He's got uh, his human face and we turn and he's got this robot face. He also has this monster face. So very, very cool um, and switch it just like that. You can turn it either way and uh, very, very neat. Love the that feature on him. Very cool looking figure. He seems uh, to be almost part robot, part man. Um, <laughs> he has the robot legs uh, as and robot arms uh, with the uh, with the rank on the side here, <laughs> the chevrons on the arms like he has like he has rank. Uh, you see those in a few characters. Roboto has this uh, trap jaws got it on on the good arm, um, and uh, yeah, and and so that's this pretty much what that that body style looks like. Of course, in Masters of the Universe, they reuse the bodies over and over again. Um, the different pieces mixed and matched to make all sorts of different crazy characters. Man, E-Faces also comes with uh, this pistol, this laser pistol gun. Um, fits perfectly in the hand, and he can uh, shoot you uh, with it, or shoot the bad guys, rather, because he's he's part of the, the heroic uh, He-Man crew. My friend Jamelin wasn't able to find this at retail. Um, kind of, kind of sucks, and uh, it may have sort of took him out of collecting these things. And I think maybe that's what what it was like for a lot of folks um, that they weren't able to find the the characters they wanted. They they weren't they didn't have access to every single one of these things, or maybe they couldn't find them at all. And then they just sort of lost interest because if you have holes in your collection or if you don't really want to go online or can't afford to go online and pay $50 a pop for these things when they're selling for $15 a pop at retail, um, yeah, it can kind of sour you on the whole experience. And that's been the, the big downside on this line and a lot of other modern lines is that that they haven't been as readily available as they should have been. Um, And, uh, you know, not the fault of the figure, but it does take a little bit away from the line. And that's Manny Faces. All right, so here is Orko. Um, Here on his stand, this is all he comes with, is uh, this stand, uh, no magic power shooting out of his hands, more just sort of farting it out of his dress. Um, But what's cool about this figure, and I think I mentioned it before when we were taking a look at it inside the box, looks a lot more like the character from the cartoon series um, than the, uh, the figure that we had in the vintage line. Not that the vintage line figure is bad, um, it's just this figure a lot cooler. All the little posability they decided to add in there. Look at his head, it moves around and you can get so many more cool kind of expressions on his face um, and you can get the, the, the arms moving around. He's got much more articulation. I guess that's where the modern posing comes in. This stand is great. You can kind of shoot him off into the sideways, upside down almost. Um, very, very cool. You've got the sparkly purple uh, base here, like a big 
puff of magic uh, getting getting shot out of, of the bottom of him. Um, very, very cool looking figure. Um, nice bright colors again, like everything else in the line. Um, very nice looking. This is going to display great. And that's at the end of the day what these are about. This is a vintage inspired line, um, a retro line, if you will. And it's made for adults. It's made for adult collectors. Um, kids can play with them too, but I don't think kids really give a crap about Masters of the Universe. Um, if they do, maybe it's more for that uh, CG series on Netflix. I don't know. But um, when it comes to these figures, I know there's a lot more adults messing around with these than there are kids. And uh, But very, very cool figures. Um, I like them. I like them a lot. They all display great. And that's Orko. And finally, um, and I have been waiting a long time to get this open. It is my favorite figure from the vintage line. And now my favorite figure in the retro inspired origins line. Um, it is Trapjaw. Very, very cool. Um, has the, the, the robot legs with the green accents, the bright green, the, the Jolly Roger belt on uh, the green accents on his blue arm his blue body he's got his uh, his mechanical arm and his uh, his helmeted head with the jaw as he's called trap jaw he has a movable jaw and uh, just like the vintage line can be moved up and down very very cool um, sits in an open position very well closes can can open way up um, very, very cool. Might even be easily popped on and off. Still has the loophole on the head so you can shoot him down a zip line. But the main event, the big uh, action feature on Trap Jaw, of which there are a couple, um, is his mechanical arm. It has this hole in the front that you could say, hey, that's already a cannon. But it's not a cannon because this is a gun that attaches here. Super easily remove that and you can attach a clamp super easily right there also he has this hook that you can apply to that super easily um and then you can have the the, the gun on there and it was like well i'm not using the hook and i'm not using the clamp well what do i do with these other things well i'm gonna put them in a bag and save them for later no his belt provides storage super easily and actually this is better than it is on the vintage figure because you can put them upside down like one of those Dairy Queen blizzards and those aren't going to fall out. And the best thing about the new uh, mechanical arm is that it is articulated. Um, we have articulation on this arm and you can get all kinds of awesome poses on Trap Jaw. Very, very cool figure. Um, I'm so glad I finally have this thing open. Finally have it um, with the collection. Um, open up your stuff for crying out loud. When it comes to this, these lines, um, these new lines where they're adding the articulation, you're really not going to get the enjoyment out of them that these are made for to have without posing the figure and, and seeing what it can do. And uh, that, when it comes to this figure, I'm so glad I have it. Super awesome. That is Trapjaw. Okay, so at the end of the day, Masters of the Universe Origins Series Two or Wave Two or whatever you want to call it, had had some uh, had a weird addition in Scareglow as he was uh, one of the last figures to come out in the Vintage line. He's one of the first figures to come out in this uh, retro-inspired, vintage-inspired line. Um, you've got Trapjaw, which is a, you know an original character. You've got Orko, which was a big character on the uh, on the cartoon. Um, comes later on in the vintage line, and uh, and of course, Man E faces a, uh, a perennial favorite of a lot of folks out there. Very, very cool figures all throughout this second series. My only problem with them, I only have one problem with these figures, is that more people weren't able to get them at retail when they came out for retail price. That's it. 
Had these been more readily available for the average Joe Schmuckatelli to go out and purchase, I think this line would have been a whole lot better. Uh, a whole lot better off moving forward. I know that the line is moving forward and we are getting lots of figures and I hope, I hope, hope, hope that we do get a, uh, a figure for every vintage figure uh, in, the, in the line, in this Origins line, because I think it's really great. I really, really like these figures. Um, I just wish everybody had the opportunity to have uh, paid the retail $15.99 or however much they cost uh, instead of the huge markups uh, online through scalpers and so on and so forth. But beyond that, Masters of the Universe Origins Series 2. Pretty awesome.